think we're all in agreement when I say that we'd love an actual Time Crisis game for PlayStation VR, but the absence of Namco's classic hasn't left us high and dry. In fact, budget titles Mortal Blitz and Crisis Brigade have done somewhat admirable jobs of filling the void. So hearing that Bullet Sorrow VR, a port of a three-year-old PC VR, Crisis-inspired budget title was headed our way, was nothing but good news. But the good news didn't last terribly long. Right off the bat, Bullet Sour presents us with awkward mandatory teleportation and click turning. And I say awkward because the teleportation reticle is finicky at best. It frequently gets stuck in the environment, or sometimes just doesn't work at all. And in a game like this, you should be able to move around without thinking. Oh, and get ready to rewire your brain. The click turning buttons are on your left hand. The stages themselves are pretty awkwardly designed as well. Whereas your enemies have free reign of every part of the level, your movement is limited to a blue grid on the floor, and there doesn't seem to be any rhyme or reason as to where those boundaries end. Only after you've cleared out the enemies in each small area will a target appear to move on to the next part of the stage. The screen fades to black, then you reappear, just two or three feet from where you were just standing, and now you can progress further into the level. The AI here is dumb as rocks. They run out one after another seemingly with zero sense of self-preservation, in almost a shooting gallery formation. So the only thing that makes them even remotely threatening is the sheer number of them. Well that and occasionally one will just be standing right behind you firing away, with of course no indication from the game that this might be happening. But it's almost never an issue. I played through Bullet Sorrow twice, once on the easiest difficulty and once on the hardest, and neither presented much of a challenge at all. Most enemies will just stand in place waiting to get shot, while others won't even be aware that they're shooting at you straight into walls or bulletproof glass. But even when things do get heated, you're equipped with a bullet time ability that lasts so long and recharges so quickly, I swear I was only out of bullet time for about 10% of the entire game. Plus, health packs are everywhere, so dying is almost never a threat. <sighs> Once you've completed a stage, you're thrown back into the main menu, and there's zero indication that you've ever played the game before. No online leaderboards, no local leaderboards, no high score, not even a check mark indicating you've completed any of the levels. And worse, with only three real stages here, each one taking roughly 10 to 15 minutes to complete, there's barely enough content to justify a purchase even if all the other problems were corrected, meaning that there's no patch in the world that's going to save this game. Strangely, the fourth stage, an endless zombie shooter, is where I found most of my fun. But during my live stream, I played it for 36 minutes. The difficulty never increased, and I finally only quit out of sheer boredom. The worst part of all of this is that even with the dumb AI, fragmented levels, and the janky locomotion system, I kept seeing glimmers of the fun game that Bullet Sorrow could have been. In tense situations surrounded by enemies, I'd hear the sound of my in-game heartbeat telling me I was low on health, so I knew that any of the bullets I was dodging Neo-style in slow motion could end my game. There's so much potential here, but sadly, all of that potential was wasted. to exit has been found from the robot. Security confirmed. After your escape, I will answer your questions. <laughs> 